Live from the famous Acme Comedy Hollywood, it's Acme Saturday Night. Starring Diana Costa, Curtis Freisel, Nick Greco. Dan Kane, Bill Kessler, Joseph Limbaugh, Melissa McQueen, Jen Parker, Brett Sheridan, Tony Rago, Jake West, and Julie Whitner. Musical guest, The Young Romans. And your host, Colin Ferguson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Colin Ferguson. Colin Ferguson. You may have known me from or seen me in like uh, guest spots or, or film things, but most probably if you know me, it's from uh, a sci-fi show called Eureka. Brett Sheridan, everybody. Give him a hand. <laughs> Not as loud as when they said you. Uh, so Colin, I actually had a couple questions for you about Eureka. Oh, well, <laughs> good timing, Brett. Well, uh, well, what, what, okay, shoot. Yeah, well, you're, you know, a good-looking guy and a uh, TV star, and I was just wondering, uh, do you get laid a lot, or? <laughs> well, usually when, when, when people ask about the show, they want to know the acting or the characters or s spoilers, so, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess it was kind of rude. I'm no, sorry. no, no, but I, I pride myself on being open, so I got to, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know. I, I guess uh, sci-fi, right? And girls yeah. love sci-fi, oh, yeah. so I get like you know, seven, eight times a day. <laughs> Sometimes I forget where my pants are. Dude, yeah. that's awesome. That's yeah. insane, man. Yeah. yeah. Actually, let's let's take a look through the audience here. Let's okay, uh, yeah. see we see we see ladies we, up front. God. Hey, ladies, why don't you come on up here? Oh, yeah, why don't you come on up here? Yeah, you guys, come on up. Yeah, there we go. Huh? Just, uh, why don't we go, were you guys interested in coming back to the green room after my monologue? Oh my god, yes! That's great. Huh. Once you go nerd, you don't go back. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't exactly how I imagined. I thought they might be a little... Oh no. I mean, these girls will do things that other girls just won't do. Oh. I, like to, I like to try to make noises like a Wookiee. Like... <laughs> I can talk dirty and cling on! Do it, do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh. So, uh, you want me to throw a little bit of this your way? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good, Carl. Right. Well, you're lost. You're lost. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a fantastic show for you the evening. Uh, ladies, we're going to go backstage and, uh, have sex with these two ladies. Yeah. All right, have a great time. Yeah. 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 Vaginas. Perfume. Sexy. Wieners. Perfume.
silent commercials for sexy perfume. Bulgarian fusion, actually. I think you're going to enjoy it. Oh. And how did you hear about this food? Well, actually, I was hiking through the Balkan Peninsula. You're so adventuresome. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> ah, Jay, my friend, hello. Welcome wow. back to Tajik and Flourish. Hello. How are you? Hello. Thank you. Um, honey, I think you're going to have to order for the both of us because this menu is crazy. Okay. Uh, I think my lady friend and I would start with a, uh, a nice dish of uh, nook nook. Ah, nook nook. Delicious. Oh, what's nook nook? Oh, well, uh, actually, it's a dish from the Chieftains of the Hills. And what they do is they take sort of a, gosh, a, a bread dough, and they, and they throw it, and they spin it until it's sort of a, a thin circle, and then they take sort of a, a, a tomato paste, and they, they cover it all over, and then like a mozzarella cheese, and they scrape it, they put it in an oven, they bake it, it comes out, and then they cut it into sort of eight pie-like pieces. Is is Bulgar Russian? <laughs> His dialect. Oh, yeah. never heard of that. Wow, God bless your simple little heart, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, is there a, a main course or? Oh, um, I was thinking maybe something from the coast of the Black Sea. Oh, oh, you mean you want some uh, sherb sherb? Uh, sherb sherb. What's sherb sherb? Ah, uh, yes, they take a piece of bread, <laughs> then layer on uh, butter made from peanuts. And then take grapes mashed into jelly and other piece of bread. Then slice diagonally. Then take off crust if necessary. It's a bit of an acquired taste, but I think you're going to like it. I'm sorry, but uh, that just sounds like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Ah. No. No, 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 no. God bless you, though. No, it's, it's actually something that they serve to the, to the chieftains of the hills to, to represent or to celebrate the rising of the sun of the Korzan forest. American. Flarb, marb, murdy, blarb. Doresh. Flurry, flu, garb. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> point well taken. I apologize. Please, allow me to offer you our specialty on the house. You don't mean the famous cloche-nosh? Yes, cloche-nosh. <laughs> I'm almost afraid to ask, but what is cloche-nosh? Yes. Small, fruit-flavored, sugary loops. <laughs> Different colors. Red. Yellow. <laughs> Orange, sometimes blue. Put in bowl, add milk, eat with spoon. Glosh nosh. Sounds like Fruit Loops. Uh, is glosh nosh? Is glosh nosh? Yes. Yeah. It's Fruit Loops. You no believe? Hear the proof. Box of glosh nosh. Okay, you, you took a box of Fruit Loops, and then you took notebook paper, notebook paper, and you, you put tape on it, and then you, you covered the Fruit Loops and wrote Klosh Nosh. I'm not here for standing here having you insult my culture, and for having you make fun of the noble and wholesome Bulgar Russian people. Noosh, gloosh, floorble, blarb. Uh, honey? No, 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 no. <clears throat> You, uh, first of all, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, like, diss your culture or anything, but you can't take food from one culture and then bring it into your culture and call it your own thing and then say it's your food. 
And is this even a language? Blurby, glurby, glurby, flarb. Like, like, fuck. Oh, oh, you, you, no. wow, wow. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you didn't, you, you plunk. No, you bro, I, no. She, no. No, no, you did this. Sorry. No, no, you did not go there. My grandfather invented a sport called plunk. Take a soccer ball, kick around the soccer field, wear soccer uniforms with other soccer players, soccer referees, soccer goalies, surrounded by crowds of soccer fans screaming, we love watching this game called soccer kick into soccer goal. So, soccer. <laughs> Plonk. <laughs> Plonk. Did she bring more of her paintings? Good afternoon, Jerry. Jane! So good to see you. What can I do for you? Well, with Valentine's Day around the corner, I have more ideas for jewelry. That's, that's great. But you know what? I, I really don't have a lot of time. Uh, I got to get a meeting, so. How popular is my open heart pendant for your company, Jerry? <clears throat> it's, uh, it's our number one seller. And what is the open heart motto? Keep your heart open and love will always find its way in. <laughs> Correct. Now keep that in mind as because you're really going to love these. <laughs> All right, I see what you did there. You, you, you switched hearts with triangles? No, Jerry, this is a completely different concept. It's the open triangle pendant. Keep your triangles open, and love will always angle its way in. Okay. Um, open triangles, what, what does that mean? I was helping my son with his geometry homework, and there was something about the equilateral triangle that just said love. Yeah. I'm going to go no on this one. Okay, I have more. Um, I was watching an American football match and realized how much I love that sport, and I was so inspired, I designed this. <laughs> All right, Jane, <clears throat> I don't want to insult your talent, but those don't look like footballs. <laughs> they, they look like a woman's you know. Well, keep your football open and love will always kick its way in. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. But they look like vaginas. <laughs> and actually, the triangles did too. I didn't want to say anything. Well, you know what they say keep your vagina open. No, they and don't. Love yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what they say. Yeah. Um, you know what? I got to get going. So just. No. Um, um, Okay, how about this one? It's the open Florida pendant. You're gonna love it. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jane! I knew you'd love it. It's beautiful, right? <laughs> are you sure you painted Florida? <laughs> what the hell are those things? So this is Florida, and it's the Sunshine State, so these are Sun rays. You know what they say? Keep Florida open and sunshine and Cubans will always find their way. <laughs> All right, Jane. Um, it looks like, and I'm I'm saying this for everyone that will ever see this painting. <laughs> it looks like male genitalia. 
Jerry, I played Dr. Quinn, a doctor, for six seasons on TV. I think I would know a cock if I painted one. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> um, how many more do you have? 38 and a half. A half? Okay, um, you know what, fine. We'll do your penis pendants. I actually just gotta get going, okay, so. Okay, well, how about this one? You're gonna love this one. The swan pendant. Oh, yeah, no. I see it, it looks great. Yeah, it looks nothing like the open heart pendant. Looks good. <laughs> okay, um, how about this one? I have one more. Okay, um, sure. The open L pendant, mm -hmm. because L stands for love, and multiply, multiply love, and you get the open L pendant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Jane, now don't take it this the wrong way, and don't be offended that whole... <laughs> Babies, open baby seal pendants. <laughs> the open fetus pendants. And now, Curtis slowly rises into view. Okay, Kevin and Susan, welcome. Let me first start out by commending you for uh, entering couples therapy. That's, a, that's an important step. Uh, for our first session, I thought it might be helpful if we talk about why we're here. Susan, why don't, why don't you go first? Okay, well, um, for me, it's all about Kevin's selfishness. Like, it's the little things. The other day, for example, I asked him, I reminded him to take his shoes off before he came in the house, right? And I got home, and there's a big shoe print on the white carpet. And he's like, don't blame me, I didn't do it. And I'm like, Kevin, then who did it? And he's like, maybe the dog did it. And I'm like, it is a shoe print. You obviously did it. And he's like, you're always getting on my case. I didn't do it. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop you there. Um, you may have a point, but I don't think you respect Kevin. Uh, what makes you say that? <laughs> <laughs> the way you make him sound. Uh, well, that's what he sounds like, so. Kevin, how do you feel about what Susan just said? I think our dog is shaped a lot like a shoe, so you can assume that it was me. It could have been him. specifics and talk about uh, core issues. <clears throat> yeah, can I start? Yeah, please. Okay. All right. Well, for me, again, it's, it's about his total lack of empathy. Like, he'll just walk around like, oh, I'm going to do what I want. Me like food. I'm not listening to anything you're saying. I'm going to hump anything that's not nailed down. Kevin, how do you feel about that? Ke Kevin, 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 how, how do you feel about that? He's not listening to you. <laughs> Kevin, <clears throat> how do you feel about what Sue's, Kevin? Kevin, how do you, Kevin, don't. Kevin, Kevin, stop. <clears throat> Ke don't hump the throw pillow. <clears throat> Look, he'll, he'll be done in a second. Just don't worry about it. <clears throat> <clears throat> I did it. Uh, wow. Um, okay. Uh, let's. Uh, that 
that's uh, <clears throat> what we have here is obviously a profoundly deep-seated pathology. Um, maybe we, we should start establishing some uh, boundaries as an essential <coughs> beginning because hey, what? All right, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin, what in the name of blessed fuck are you doing? He's eating a turkey leg. Yeah. Yes, but why? Not food! Cialis for daily use. You can be ready anytime the moment is right. With Cialis for daily use, men with ED can be more confident in their ability to be ready. Cialis for daily use is effective for most men. But not always for most women. So ask your doctor. and your wife. If Cialis is right for you. Cialis for daily use. So you can be ready anytime the moment is right. Oh 
And now, Curtis slowly rises into view, Colin Ferguson Remix. Welcome to Street Urchins! And now, here's your favorite street urchins, Pip and Polly! Hey, all you kiddies out there, I'm Pip! And I'm Polly! We're the poorest friends you'll ever know! But we're the bestest friends you'll ever have! Are you ready to be a street urchin and live with the shadows under Big Ben? Yeah. Fantastic, my lovelies! Stands for act, for act off. We hacked off. Pa 
Missus gone to hell in an unbasket. We better get out before we go to you, Scow. Who Scow is prison, boys and girls? It's a hardcore hellhole of a place that makes your hiney hurt. Right. So, so long. So long. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. oh no, we're yeah. in a heap of trouble. Uh. I knew I'd find you hard-headed, hapless little hooligans. Oh, hit the rat, as are we. Hey, Alice. Once again, Curtis slowly rises into view. Potato Remix. <laughs> we don't know why either. What can I do for you? Uh, this is Roger, and I'm Laura, and we were hoping to get some information on mortgages. <laughs> well, my name's Janine, and I'll be your mortgage broker, captain, and dance instructor for the next two hours. Just kidding, folks. I'll just be your mortgage broker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we're thinking about buying a house, so we'd love to get some information on the market. Well, you sure came to the right place. Sit down, buckle up, and get ready to get on the Mortgage Ride 101. All aboard. Wait, we're not all aboard. Some of us are excited. <laughs> we just wanted some basic information. Well, I hope you're ready to set sail on the river bank, because this boat's leaving the dock. <laughs> on the left, you'll notice a sign with a 30-year mortgage with a five-year arm of 5.2%. If I only had 5.2% of an arm, I'd look like this. <laughs> you're hilarious. <laughs> what is that you're doing with your voice? What's... And on the right, you'll notice a 1.3% rate on equity. Watch out for equity's sister, the equine. She sure likes to horse around. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> term of going into escrow a lot. What exactly is escrow? That's a great question, Laura. Escrow is simply the name of Q Crow and R Crow's little sister. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it. Thank you. How did you get anything out of that? <gasps> get down. I think I hear a wild flock of escrows flying right at us. Pew, <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Woo! That was a close one! Yeah. Okay, okay, I think we're leaving. This is... Please keep your arm legs and other appendages inside the mortgage drive until we've come to a complete stop. <laughs> you do realize we're not moving, right? Roger, sit down. <gasps> I forgot to tell you, that seat's a whoopee cushion. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious and I'm learning so much. <laughs> what? She's not funny and, and I learned nothing. What, honey, what are... Seriously, you, you sound like uh, you know one of the, the tour guides on the Jungle Cruise in Disneyland. Well, 
if I've appraised this situation correctly, I'd say you're leaning toward being interested in a mortgage. <laughs> yep, we're leaving. But I've barely even started. Wait for it. There it is. <laughs> In 2009, after Colin Ferguson had his manager over to his house for a pitch meeting, the result, the starring role in the Sci-Fi Channel original movie, Lake Placid 3. This is that pitch meeting. Well, Richard, thanks for coming over. I appreciate it. I just want to, I sort of want, if we can do it, to make 2010... You know, the year of Colin Ferguson. Sure. If, there's, if there's a script that I could, you know, sort of sink my teeth into and really get behind. Right. Well, there is a few uh, scripts I've been reading and I think you might get behind. Great, great. What you got? Okay. Uh, the first one is called King's Speech. King's Speech. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about <clears throat> King George VI as he battles to overcome a terrible speech impediment. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Could be okay. good. A um, couple ideas. How about mm -hmm. instead of maybe, uh, how about... If it's more of a small town father, and what he's doing is is, is like battling crocodiles. <laughs> Colin, that's a completely different story. Well, I know it takes some tweaking, but I think it'll work. Well, it's based on a very popular stage play. I doubt they'd be willing to change it. Well, then maybe they don't want to work with Colin Ferguson. <laughs> So let me get this straight. The criteria you're looking for is small town father battles giant crocodiles. No, no, I'm just I'm spitballing oh. here. No, yeah, I I, I want to come up with something sort of that I can that I can really sort of shine in, you know, to give a performance sort of filled with gravitas and pathos. Okay, okay. Well, how about uh, how about this one? It's called 127 Hours. Okay. All right. It's the real life story of mountain climber Aaron Ralston who, yes. who got his arm caught between the rock and. Eventually had to saw it off himself. I mean, you want to give a performance. This is this is your movie. Yeah, yeah, I like it. That's uh, it's raw, it's visceral. Right? Yeah, yeah. I thought you'd like it. Yeah. Okay, couple ideas, couple ideas. How about um, instead of a mountain climber, uh -huh. right, right? Uh -huh. We 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 have sort of more of a like a, a small town father, right? <laughs> and then instead of like a mountain, we have we have veteran actor Michael Ironside. Right? And then, and then, right? Instead, instead of sort of cutting my own hand off, battle giant crocodiles. <laughs> Colin, once again, that is a complete departure from the original material. Well, excuse me for wanting to have a career that I can look back on someday and be proud of. <laughs> Why do you feel you must battle giant crocodiles? No, I don't. It, it could be alligators. <laughs> Do you want to do the movie or not? <laughs> Respectfully, I decline. I just don't think it'll do anything for my career. Would you have any interest in doing a movie directed by the Coen brothers? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not, you know, Mr. G.E. first, director of Wolf's Bane and 30 Days to Die, but, you know, I... <laughs> See what I got. <laughs> well, it's a remake of True Grit without giant crocodiles. In fact, it's been expressly stated that n in no way, shape, or form will giant crocodiles be added to the film. No chance? No chance. <laughs> Damn, because I like the first True Grit, you know, but I just thought it could always benefit from some no big crocodile. You know. <laughs> I, what I know, right? I'm just an actor, right? That's the. Any interest? <laughs> Pass. I, yes, just, just 
need something that, you know, is, is special, I guess. <laughs> so you saying there's nothing out there for me? You might be out of luck, Colin. Okay. All right. I, I suppose there is one script I haven't taken a look at yet. They sent a synopsis with it. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, sure. Hit me. <clears throat> struggle of one small town father. <laughs> yes. Along with veteran character actor Michael Ironside. <laughs> as they battle giant crocodiles. Stop it right there! Are you making fun of me? <laughs> In the sci-fi channel of original movie Lake Placid 3, GE First is signed to direct. I'll take it! I'll take it! This is for the early risers, the ones who tell themselves, just one more. You deserve a beer that fits your active lifestyle. You deserve Michelob Jim. The company that brought you the popular Michelob Ultra now has a healthier choice. Michelob Jim. With two carbs and zero calories, it's perfect for the athlete like you. Michelob Jim has less sugar and twice the electrolytes as the leading sports drink. And doctors say that's good for my body. I have kids, so I get a lot of my workouts at home. Now I can drink all day long while I watch the kids and not feel guilty because it's healthy. <laughs> Isn't that right, Jacob? And you shouldn't feel guilty. The average beer has an alcohol content of 4%. Michelob Jim has less than that, a slimming 3.8. You're right. Since I've been on the Michelob Jim diet, I have been losing weight. <laughs> I find Michelob Gym helps with my stamina because sometimes I work out for hours and I don't realize it. But sometimes I, I wake up and I don't remember working out at all, but I'm seeing results, so I must be. Hey, they're going the same way. Bigelow Jim didn't just get me in shape. It also made me hilarious and bulletproof. And now every girl I talk to is beautiful. Unless they want to be a bitch about it. Did I mention that Michelob Jim is the first beer to contain electrolytes? That's good for sports and beer. Michelob Jim. It has electrolytes. The high potency electrolytes in Michelob Gym will not prevent lack of coordination, impairment in judgment, or bad decisions caused by drinking Michelob Gym. Please drink responsibly. From the Acme News World Headquarters in Hollywood, this is the Acme Saturday Night News with Dan Kane. Everybody, welcome to the Acme Saturday Night News the world's least trusted news source. I'm Dan Kane. Our top story tonight, after 30 years of tight control of his people, Hosni Mubarak has stepped down as president of Egypt. The military is now running the country and says its strategy is to first get a small group of supporters at the top, then to get buy into its leadership plan, get a group that will recruit more people to buy into their ideas, and that group will seek out support from friends and relatives and so on until it spreads throughout the country. Egypt, the cradle of life and the home of the original pyramid scheme. <laughs> President Obama commented on the change of power yesterday, saying, by stepping down, President Mubarak responded to the Egyptian people's hunger for change. Sarah Palin also released a statement, which read, by stepping down, President Barack responded to the Alaskan people's hunger for change. 
Then she immediately tweeted, yay, I'm the president, because she still has no idea how that works. <laughs> As you know, the Grammy Awards are taking place tomorrow. One of the biggest questions plaguing fashion critics everywhere is, what will Lady Gaga wear? Here with some answers to that question is Lady Gaga. Well, hello, Lady Gaga. Hello, Dan Kane. <laughs> so uh, with your unique and risque fashion sense, critics are dying to know what you're going to wear tomorrow to the Grammys. So what are you going to wear? To be perfectly honest, Dan, I haven't decided yet, but I'm happy to share what I'm considering. Well, I, I think that would be great. Well, Dan, instead of a traditional gown, I'm leaning toward drenching myself in blood and saliva. In lieu of makeup, my face would be covered in chocolate syrup and wet fairy dreams. I see. Uh, uh, and uh, is, is that all you'd be wearing with that? Unless it's cold, then I'd of course wear a sweater. Always practical, Lady Gaga. So uh, what else are you considering? Outfit number two is a swimming pool filled with candy canes and homosexual crocodiles. I don't know if that sounds more weird or dangerous. Oh, no, Dan. It's not dangerous. The crocodiles' mouths will be held shut with diamond orphaned whispers. Of course. That makes sense. Is that it? There is one more garment I'm considering, Dan. And what's that? A cumulonimbus cloud in a concentration camp. Good luck with that. I don't think the Grammys will let you in with any of those outfits. Well, in that case, Dan Kane, perhaps I'll just wear a dress. Sensible always. Lady Gaga, everyone. <laughs> Is she gone? I never quite know. Last weekend's Super Bowl halftime performance continues to draw criticism, with many people saying the Black Eyed Peas gave themselves another black eye with poor sound quality and an even worse attempts at harmonizing. The group was sporting some cool looks, though, including Tron outfits and the letters shaved in the back of their heads. Here's the cut on Will I Am. And here's the close up of Fergie. She has really interesting scalp tone color. <laughs> With the Packers' Super Bowl win, some people were asking, hey, remember Brett Favre? We wondered what he's up to, so we asked him for an interview, and he was completely available. We go live now to our Acme special correspondent, Joseph Limbaugh, who is with Brett Favre. Hey, Hi, Dan. Joseph. Hi, Hi how you doing? Indeed, uh, with Brett Favre, and uh, we have word that he's finally announced his retirement. Brett, what prompted this decision to retire? Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Joseph. I'm not retiring, and I never was. Really? Because you arranged this interview so you could announce your retirement. If I was going to retire, uh, it would be so that I could be at, uh, at home more, you know, riding my lawnmower. Here, let me, let me send you a picture of it. That's a picture of your penis. <laughs> Well, it's not like you haven't seen it before. That's why I'm retiring, so that I can spend more time with my penis. All right, so you are retiring. Oh, quit hassling me, all right? I can't stand the pressure. I already admitted that I am retiring. Oh. Uh, all right, you just sent me another picture of your penis. I didn't even know how you did that. I, I got the same thing, uh, Joseph. Same one. Okay, so you're retiring. I'm retiring. You're, okay. I am not. I am now. Not retiring now, I am. Are you now? Not uh, retiring. I'm just looking for a new team on Craigslist. I'll send you a link. No, that's okay. I don't need a link. You know what, Dan? I think we're done here. Back to you. Uh, thanks, Joseph. And thanks, Brett, for the pictures. The online discount provider Groupon 
has announced that it will stop running ads which make fun of various social issues like human rights violations. Groupon reassured its customers that it does take people's health and safety seriously. However, they will continue to sell millions of coupons for cheap, creepy massages. <laughs> Limit 30 per customer. <laughs> this week, Lindsay Lohan, friend of comedy, <laughs> wore a sexy white dress to court. Come on, Lindsay. All the brides know that social etiquette demands that you don't wear white if you've been arraigned before. <laughs> oh. And finally tonight, Valentine's Day is this Monday. Many of the guys here in the audience just went, oh shit. <laughs> but Subway restaurants will be giving customers a free cookie with every sandwich. Really? Who's falling for that? I mean, what kind of pathetic... Lonely guy is making dinner reservations at a subway on Valentine's Day. That's ridiculous. <laughs> well, the macadamia nut cookies are pretty good. All right, that's it for this edition of the Acme News, and I'm still Dan Kane. Jake West, Master of the Recovery. That is a hilarious wig. This isn't a wig. I know. That's wig is German for crazy hair. Phew. Brilliant. The Young Romans. Love is so overrated. I don't need more evidence. Just take my recent history of anecdotes and epidemics. Pointing to one conclusion. I'm better off by myself. So what do I do with the problem of you? Turning my argument upside down. Symphony the red 
gentlemen, the Young Romans. This is for the champions, the ones who tell themselves, I'm not fine with second place. You deserve a beer that inspires you to achieve your goals. You deserve Michelob Jim. I was lucky if I got down here twice a month. Thanks to Michelob Jim, I'm here 8 to 12 times a week. Get a job, Daddy. You get a job. Hey, man. If Lance Armstrong says it's good for my body, I believe him, you know? Because he wouldn't lie. What? One day a guy was bench pressing and asked me for a spot. And I said, I got you, brother. And then I walked away. He almost died. Because he didn't use me to load Jim. That's the thing. What was that? You got something to say? Why don't you say it to my face? <laughs> Who's the king of the gym now? What is your problem? Somebody help this guy's wasted! I'm not wasted. It's electrolytes. You're drinking beer! It's a sports beer. You want to go out or what's up? If you want to lead an active life and enjoy the simple pleasures without a drug test, then reach for Michelob Jim. And your body won't be the only one thanking you. Michelob Jim, it has electrolytes. Please drink responsibly. And speaking of responsibilities, Michelob Jim is not responsible for arrests, pregnancies, abortions, marriages, divorces, or death. It is, however, responsible for your good health. Turn you to Eureka on Sci Fi. What? What? Trouble in Eureka. What? Did, 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 did the electromagnetic field become unstable? Is it, is it what? No, worse. I can't find my house keys. You, you, you run in here and you say that we're all in trouble? Yeah. I know. I know what we can do. We can create an army of nanites and send them out to search the globe. Once they find the keys, they can break them down into their component molecules. Copy the keys and reassemble them here. Yes. <laughs> Allie, that seems like a lot of work for a lost set of keys and dangerous. He's right, he's right. We'll go back in time, kidnap my landlord, make copies of the keys, right? And then we'll hide it here under this mug. Damn it! Well, why'd you have to kidnap him? I mean, that, that, look, just... Uh, okay, I'll do it. You can turn my brain into a giant magnet tuned to the electromagnetic frequency of brass, thus attracting the keys and anything else brass within one mile. <laughs> to my face. Uh, you're a hero. Look, um, you gave me a 
spare set of keys that I could have in case you lost the other set. You could, yeah. Lucky guess, Sheriff. <laughs> Look, all this searching for keys has made me starving. Does anyone else want popcorn? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, no! There's no more popcorn! No! What? I think there's another bag behind I know. Me. I know what we can do. We can take a paper clip. We can reconfigure its molecular structure to match that of a kernel of corn. Yes. Then we can multiply it by a thousand using quantum... Entanglement. 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 Push it back and forth in the time stream. That sounds pretty simple. Yeah. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty serious. It's excessive, is what it is. No, he's right. We'll go back in time. Kidnap Native Americans. Right? We'll force them to teach us how to grow maize. Yes. Then, when the time is right, we'll kidnap their corn and their land. We'll take their land. Yes. What? No! No, no, no! You're right. OK, we'll okay. go back in time. Kidnap Orville Redenbacher. Yes. Buy stock options because Stop the company's going to Stop with the kidnapping. Okay. You guys, there's a simple solution to this problem. There's another package right over. I'll get it. I'll get the laser so you can turn my brain into delicious, lightly salted popcorn. Yes. You're a hero. It's amazing. Can we use butter? Of course. We're scientists. Lucky guess, Sheriff. <laughs> no, it's a simple solution to a problem. Give me that. Uh, Ow! What? Wh mm. I have a hangnail. <gasps> you, ah, uh, wow. I know, I know what we can oh, do to fix wow. this. Oh, wow, wow. We can create a new species of human beings that don't have fingernails. Then we can force grow the clones into adulthood, take the hands off of them, and transplant them onto what used to be your hands. Hurry, it's just a hangnail. You can use uh, scissors, you can use nail clippers. I'll do you, it. You, mm. <laughs> you can switch bodies with me. I don't have a hangnail. You're a hero. Well, I know, we'll go back in time. <laughs> and kidnap, and we'll kidnap, we'll kidnap Carrot Top. What is up with you going back in time and kidnapping people? It's not, it, and why Carrot Top? He gets bashed a lot, right? I mean, I saw him in Vegas last month, and it was a great time. I had a good time. And, ow! Mm, it hurts. Here, 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 let me, let me, let me. Ow! Mm, ow. Lucky guess, Sheriff. Hey, everybody! <laughs> Kidnap Carrot Top. <laughs> and now, Jake West, Master of the Recovery. My girlfriend has the cutest tattoo on her butt. <laughs> yeah, the butterfly. What? No, dude, every girl has a tattoo of a butterfly on her butt. Ask your sister. Phew, that would have been awkward. I don't mind religion or spirituality. It's just, you know, these people who claim to enjoy new age stuff and and they try and link it to science I mean like 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 energy or attraction or vibrations have anything to do with string theory or something it's just pseudoscience okay you're only saying that because you don't understand it <laughs> I don't think so okay, well if you two guys are gonna talk about religion I'm gonna go in the kitchen and check on the appetizers okay <laughs> Okay, just let me explain it to you. It is science. It's just really basic physics. Because, see, your thoughts create your reality. Everything in the universe is energy. 
vibrating energy, like your thoughts are energy, everything you see, touch, and feel is energy. Like, you are energy, I am energy, the water we drink is energy, the air we breathe is energy. Okay, 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 but what I don't see, what I okay. don't... The reason you don't see it is because you didn't let me finish. <laughs> Everything is energy. Your computer, your bed, your clothes, music, the wind, time, consciousness, subatomic particles, fish, patio furniture, a giraffe. Everything's energy. I get it. I get it. It's... I don't think you do get it since I was in the middle of a sentence. A giraffe, a wallet, Legos, the Star Wars prequels, duvet covers, a hairbrush, the lingering hope that you were really adopted, poster frames, money, a mustache, big Newtons, sex, dust bunnies, regret, sunglasses, sadness, a vase, Dental floss, a child's laugh. All energy! I know what you're gonna say! Please <laughs> listen. Powdered sugar, <laughs> wind chimes, a hydrangea bush, glasses. I think you've illustrated your point. I don't Gasoline, think I need to... a photograph, a gerbil, <laughs> the cast of Barney Miller, coffee, <laughs> an ottoman, Leonard Park 6, I don't even think he's anymore. socks, a deviated septum, How are you doing? crystals, are you guys, a painting are you guys by Leroy Newman, a lady broke, yeah, like right that's great! The members of Dexie's Midnight Runners, <laughs> a melon baller, Garbage, that drink, a balloon, shampoo, microderm abrasion therapy, cuticles, comic books, carpeting the members of the first cast of Saturday Night Live, um, Blade Runner, a VHS copy of the first few stars. <laughs> I hear you two are getting married. Oh, oh. well, uh, actually, we're, we're having a commitment ceremony because we're not legally allowed to get married yet. I guess uh, some people still like to pretend that gay people don't exist. <laughs> yeah, even though uh, we are your neighbors. Yeah, you know? Yeah. We are your sisters. <laughs> we are your friends. We are your co-workers. <laughs> we are your firemen. We are your policemen. <laughs> we are your baristas, your doctors. Your lawyers, your soloists, your violinists. <laughs> Once again, Jake West, Master of the Recovery. Jake. Thanks for coming to the funeral. Of course, man. Sorry. Sorry about your mother. This is my father's funeral. No, I, I know. That's my point. Sorry that your mother looked like your father. Phew! That was a close one. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys for coming. We've really had a good time. I hope you had a good time. It was rough and fun. Thank you guys very much. And again, the Young Romans. Give it up for the Young Romans. And now give it up for your cast, everybody. Give it up for your cast. And now give it up for yourselves, because you're fantastic people. And give it up for the cameraman. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night.